Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And as promised, I told you that we were going to look at the Transformers Age of Extinction Dinobots uh, done with uh, some custom work uh, into G1 colors. And I started off with AOE Grimlock versus FOC Grimlock and said that we had to start there because for me, the leader of the Dinobots is still the uh, Fall of Cybertron version. Um, and my trick, my goal was to make him kind of fit in as much as possible with the uh, movie aesthetic or make the movie aesthetic fit in with his. Either way, uh, you know, you have some choices for Dinobots. You can go the Masterpiece route, and I mentioned that, or you could always get some of the more expensive third-party figures uh, like the Planet X version, uh, which is a fantastic set, or you could just go to retail, get the AOE Dinobots. Don't even worry about getting the Platinum Edition set. Don't worry about getting anything with Chrome on it. You can just get the, you know, brightly colored Dinobots that were out at retail and, uh, you know, now in the aftermarket, pay kind of little for them and uh, get some paint pens and, and, you know, do it yourself. This is Transformers Age of Extinction Voyager class. Slog slash Sludge. It is the movie version of Sludge. I guess they couldn't get the trademark. They went with the name Slog. And this is on loan to me. Ooh, this is on loan to me from uh, Starscream Girlfriend Scraplets. This is my version done in the G1 colors. Why am I starting out with this guy? Because I had to do so little with him. He was great to begin with. Uh, you can see what I what I did with him. I added gold on the dino head. You do not see it over here. Uh, I added black uh, to his face or to his head uh, instead of being all solid gray. Uh, instead of having black feet, this guy has gold feet. And instead of just having a solid gray chest with a couple of little red inserts there, I gave him a completely red chest. And a lot of people would put gold in here for that G1 cover. But I, in thinking back to the uh, animation, in there was black. So I painted it black. I have his chest red and black, his head black, his kneecaps and his feet gold, uh, his kneecaps red and his feet black. Uh, you know, so I didn't have to do much and I think that this is a is a pretty decent passable version of Sludge. What we're gonna do is uh, I will I guess I'll talk about paint apps right now. You know, his paint apps were pretty good. Um, they were, you know, they were nine. I think his paint apps now that I've touched them up are ten. I, I you know, to me He's as good of a representation of that character as we could get. And uh, I was very cognizant and aware of keeping the beautiful, bright eyes. I love what they did there. Um, posability, playability, well, they have exactly the same posability. The head is, you know, on a ball joint that looks way up. It can look down, you know, down a little bit. It goes left and right. The shoulders, uh, you know... They can go all the way around, and he has the gorilla arms uh, syndrome where it goes across his chest, but you can turn them out and bend them up. It's just his fist will stay like this instead of being like this because there is no wrist articulation. Um, so if that bothers you, well, it bothers you. Uh, as far as going out goes, you don't get a lot of out movement, um, but I, I, I don't really feel like it matters too much with this guy because... He's such a big bruiser. Uh, as far as everything else goes with him, you have, let's just lay that guy aside for a minute. Uh, you have a swivel at the waist, which is nice. His thighs can go way out to the side, um, or his hips, I guess I should say, can go way out to the side. He does have a thigh swivel, and he has a knee bend too, just under 90 degrees. And his toes can pivot forward and back. Um, and of course, like I said, that's the same with both of these because they're they're the same thing, except this guy's repainted. Poseability, playability, 
an eight. The shoulders are limited. He does have this piece that kind of just hangs away, really. These pieces move however you want them to appear. I kind of leave them like this as, as like wing, you know, a wing look. Uh, you know, you could put them up on his shoulders like, like so and have these pieces in behind. They can go in his hands as lances, whatever you're so inclined to do. So, so far, uh, the paint apps are good, the post-ability, play-ability is good. This guy is a good figure, but now we get into the transformation. And I will show you both of these guys in dino mode. I will only, of course, show you the transformation of one. And which one am I gonna show you the transformation for? Lay him aside, and I'll show you the transformation with this guy, the regular retail version. Why not? Um, the transformation is a beast for this guy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, folks, at all. Where do we even begin? Well, you close up these parts and you kind of turn them out because they're eventually going to become his feet. And you can even take his shoulders and kind of put them out like this because you know that you're kind of trying to go for this look. Um, the shoulders here are on the cylinders that are connected down right here. You need to actually, and this is where it gets tight and tricky with this guy. You need to actually kind of fold the shoulders out if you can. It is not easy to do at all. And you need to open the chest. Uh, you kind of need to do all of that in one sort of fluid motion, to be honest with you. and you kind of can't do it in one fluid motion that's the that's the real kicker with it there i got this this one bent out and i'll try to do the same on the other side so this is tighter and i got that one bent out now you need to try and keep those straight while you open the chest but the chest is really quite tight you also need to bring up that entire back piece in order to Bring these together and you see the fiddling I'm doing here because you need to get his arms out of the way, you need to get the back piece and this out of the way. You had to straighten out those shoulder pieces and bring back the full kind of back piece there to open up his chest. Dandy. You bring this up around and it this piece kind of comes down and covers his face. It should come down between these two chest pieces, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. Let's bring his feet down, because they're going to go in underneath him. Um, there you go. We can open up his chest now. We push this piece back. We take the, you know, lances, and I guess bend them down. We pick the head up off of his back and bring it all the way out. We turn it around like so. And there's, you know, his head. I guess we should turn his feet around so that they're facing the right direction. Oh, and you can take his fists and push them back. Take his fist and push it back. And there you go. That's kind of the front of the dynamo done. It is not wonderful. This loose piece here comes down and kind of tucks in under. Uh, his robot shoulders to try and like loosely stay in place it doesn't work that great to be perfectly honest with you and you kind of get something that looks like that we're not even at the hard part yet folks not even at the hard part now we're gonna come to the hard part his bottom half the tail flips all the way out the tail flips all the way out <sighs> You want to put the legs down like this and, okay, see if I can explain this because it's not, okay. So you open out the tail like this. You bring the whole leg forward and right up around. And same on this side. You bring the whole leg forward and right up around. So now the legs are facing up compared to the dinosaur body. Then you need to twist the thigh sort of down and around like this to bring the leg back down. You want to twist the thigh down and 
around like that. Now the legs are back down. So they were facing up and you twisted them back down around. You can take the tail and you can, you know, peg that together. And you can even put this front skirt piece in between it. Again, this front skirt piece is soft, rubbery plastic. I don't know how the soft, rubbery plastic will hold up over time, to be honest with you. The entire body was accordioned up on itself. And right now, his body is too short. So you need to unaccordion the body on this hinge right here that was up in the body. You need to unaccordion it and bring it out for now. Yeah, that's right, I said for now. There you go. This is what we have for this guy. Um, you need to take the legs and you want to open them up. Take the legs and you want to open them up. I find that it's best to turn them around so that you have these spindly spokes sticking out because it's just easier to deal with. Again, these pieces, all soft, rubbery plastic. Undo the kneecap, undo the kneecap. You're just untabbing it. There's a little tab on the kneecap that goes into a little hole right here. You're just untabbing it. Then you want to try and open the leg up all the way. You untab this kneecap and you open the leg up all the way. Thankfully, in here, it gets to be a harder plastic. And you want to bring out the dino foot. It is held inside. Over on this leg, you can see the dino foot is held inside the leg that wrapped around it. Bring it all the way out. You're going to take the robot feet and you're going to flip them up inside. You're going to take the robot foot and you're flipping it up inside. Now what do you do? Well, now you need to make the center mass of the dinosaur's body. How do you do that? You know how we opened the legs before? Well, now we're going to close the legs up again. You push them as much together as you can, really. And then you need to start bringing these back pieces together. When you bring these back pieces together... Let's see if I can do this. When you bring these back pieces together, here's what's happening. You have interlocking teeth and you're going to try and, well, interlock those teeth so that they hold. Uh, I will tell you now, actually locking those teeth because both sides are on, you know, that soft rubbery plastic is easier said than done. I have the top ones done and now the bottom one's done. Um, And let's try and deal with this now. Now it's a matter of kind of finagling the body together a bit, if you can. Bring down these shoulder pieces like so. And this chest piece is just, you know, ideally the chest piece should just be down like this, but it's not what really happens. We can put the lances up to face out, sort of like, sort of like this. The chest piece probably is not going to stay in. Uh, and this is what we have in the end for slog. And no, uh, see, the chest piece did not want to stay in there. What, uh, what a failure of a chest piece. What a shame. Anyway, I'm at this juncture, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to put uh, the other slog into dino mode, uh, and we will come back and take a look at both of them. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, and welcome back. There you go. Uh, here he is in dino mode, and I need to show something. I did forget one final step. Okay, after you accordion the body out, and after you got everything done, you come down here and you realize this doesn't stick in. Here's why. These two shoulder pieces need to come together. You will see a tooth right here and a slot between two teeth over right here. Those shoulders that we opened up earlier now need to go closed on each other again. And once you close them on each other, then you're supposed to be able to push that down and fit it under 
the shoulder pieces. Again, I don't find that it stays that good. It's coming back out there. So here's what I do, and I have it done with him. I bring the lances down, and the lances just push that chest piece in a little bit more. Uh, in the end, this is the alt mode. Uh, again, very similar. Not much in the way of paint apps done here. Um, about the only differences you're going to see is this guy has, you know, gray teeth on the sides of his chest, and he has a, a black and, and gray head. Um, this guy has, of course, a gold head. Um, again, I maintained those beautiful eyes. He has a gold head. He has, you know, red on the sides of his chest. And the backs of his back legs, they're going to be gold. The backs of his legs are going to be red. Um, not a huge difference here. This was a really, really easy little customization. Uh, but, so far, here's what we have. I will move the retail version of Slog out of the way. And, boom. There are our Dinobots so far with Grimlock and Slog slash Sludge. We are going to move on and get through these guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time inside the video. Oh, sorry. I cut off a, a minute or so too soon. I didn't grade the transformation for these guys. Uh, their transformation is really finicky, really hard. I can't even say panely pieces. There's a lot of soft rubber pieces. Transformation is about a six. A six for me, it's not that fun. For a kid, it's probably about a four. He is just too hard. He's fun in dino mode. He's fun in robot mode. He's terrible to get back and forth. So with, you know, a good score for paint apps of a nine or a ten, post play playability being about a, a seven, and his transformation being somewhere between a four and a six, so we'll say a five. Overall, this guy, he's about a, somewhere between a six and a seven. Let's say a six and a half. Uh, anyway, that's the only thing I wanted to add was the grade form. Nevertheless, this guy is going to stand as my representation of G1 Sludge. Now, I will see you next time inside the videos. Thanks for watching.